All right, guys, so welcome back to round two. Uh, apologies for in game the fact that in game one we did not have any commentary. We did turn the microphone off as we had some buildings maintenance people in the room where we're broadcasting from, and I figured it was a better service to you guys to not to let you listen to the various banging and ply, uh, prying that was going on as they tried to get the blinds in this room to close. But uh, they have subsequently left, and so now we get into our round two feature match already in progress. Kazu Negri on the left, he's up a game with his mono black devotion, getting game one thanks to a desecration demon and a well-timed gray merchant. And his opponent, also from Four Horsemen in Morgantown, is Rhino Lachlan, who's playing the Boros burn deck, running out of steam in game one, getting Kazu down to six, but unable to seal the deal. Both these players are undefeated. This is round two of eight Swiss rounds, followed by a cut to top eight from the 2014 local store-sponsored West Virginia State Championship. This round sponsored by Nerdicopia. Check them out at their location on Main Street in Buchanan, West Virginia, sellers of Magic the Gathering and other great gaming. So Ryan starts the game off with a red-white scry land of Kazu's Thoughtseize nabs a Boros Charm. It seems somewhat counterproductive to, be, to leave Thoughtseize in in this matchup, but uh, for every two life you pay on a Thoughtseize, it often equates to a, a net gain from the three and four damage spells out of the burn deck, so obviously very content. We get a Toil and Trouble with a turn two Duress. Ryan on the Molta six, I should say, in this game, so not looking good for him here. Kazu siding in uh, Duress is out of the board. They're in the board for control matchups, but they're just as good here as uh, each duress ends up being basically a healing salve or better. Ryan gets on the board first with a turn three Chandra's Phoenix, and I apologize for the glare there. Uh, we, we are going to have some glare today, uh, which is unavoidable in these large setups where we don't, in these off-site setups where I don't have as much control over the room, but uh, there's something particular about Ryan's sleeves which are causing a lot of uh, a lot of glare, so I apologize for that. I'll try and stay on top of what cars are actually in those spots. We see Kazu scrying one to the bottom off his Temple of Deceit and then just passing back here, so not sure if we have a uh, removal spell for the Phoenix at this spot. He's going to be pretty content at this point. It's on his uh, his opponent's fourth turn of the game, and he's only taken four damage so far, and two of that he did to himself with a Thought Seize. So the Phoenix comes in. The question is, do we want to... Uh, burn a removal spell on it, or do we want to drop down to 14? I think that's what Kazu is thinking himself. Not sure about his exact list. Again, I do not have access to deck lists, but uh, Kazu representing Ultimate Price, Doomblade, or Bioblight in this spot. And he decides just to eat the two and drop down to 14 still. Uh, in pretty decent shape here, especially considering Ryan is down to just uh, two cards in hand. Again, on the mall and already having eaten two discard spells. So no fourth untapped mana source from Kazum means a demon is not going to in be, be inbound this turn. But he's still debating his plays there. I cannot see what's in his hand. It looks like there's another Thought Seize. And there is a Duress. So an Assemble the Legion and a Chandra's Phoenix. Interesting that uh, Ryan chose not to cast Chandra's Phoenix last turn. I guess potentially playing around Bile Blight. But this one hits the bin and he does in fact offer up the replacement. Uh, so obviously playing around the potential one card wrath or two mana wrath I should say and then Kazu with four mana untapped now does land a desecration demon so Ryan is going to be up against it from here on out with one Chandra's Phoenix in the bin two cards in hand We'll go ahead and take a look at, while well, Ryan ponders his options here, go ahead and take a look at Bile Blight, a new card from Born of the Gods, which essentially, uh, it's essentially a, a targeted removal spell in the format currently, as it hits basically 
all of the non-Corsair Crufix and high-end cards, but uh, the ability in this matchup to kill two birds with one stone, obviously something Ryan was aware of in playing around. But he has decided to sack his second Chandra's Phoenix to the Demon to try and stave off stave off that damage, but Kazu at 14 life, still well ahead of it um, in terms of life total. Much much more comfortable uh, in this game than he was in game one as Ryan got him all the way down to six when all was said and done. But a timely thought sees in duress early netting uh, what amounted to at least uh, seven damage from Ryan and then nabbing the Assemble the Legion, which comes in out of the board, I assume, before Ryan had fifth mana to cast it. So a main phase Magma Jet here from Ryan. Let's see if he remembers his Chandra's Phoenix triggers. Scries one to the top and shoves one to the bottom. Oh, this in response to a Duress. I apologize. So, uh, Duress... <laughs> Kazu's control-based sideboard cards doing a lot of work in this matchup. Uh, the two duresses netting uh, two Assemble the Legion so far. There's a chain to the rocks which will slow the uh, onslaught down tremendously as Kazu will now look for another win condition. Sitting on six mana and it looks like a pack rat so pack rat up and we've got enough mana to activate it in response to a burn spell and again uh, looks like Ryan also did miss his Chandra, Fe Chandra's Phoenix triggers. And just passes back. End of turn, Kazu's going to go make a rat. He's going to look through our token pile, but uh, unless there's some kind of custom token in there, I don't think he's going to find a rat because they don't exist. Wizard's very careful to not print a uh, pack rat token since it is an exact copy of the uh, pack rat. It is not, uh, not a traditional token. It does have a casting cost and it does have rules text. So there's a Muta Vault, so we can attack in now. If we tap the Muta Vault and activate it for 6 damage here, and the next turn attacking with that Muta Vault, it will be lethal. So Ryan on a 2 turn clock here. And Kazo choosing to bend the last card in his hand pre-combat as well, and activate his Muta Vault. So now swinging in for 8. So Ryan down to 5 here. And dead on board. I'm not. I don't think there's a single card in uh, in his deck which can get him out of this. War Leader's Helix targeting Kazu puts him down to eight and puts Ryan up to nine. But uh, Kazu's still representing. If he bends the next card that he draws off the top, he'll have four pack rats and a Muta Vault, so that's good for 22 damage. And I'm not sure there's a. Uh, we see a skull crack in Ryan's hand. He can get him down to five, and even with another burn spell, get him down to. If it's a Boros Charm, as low as one, but I don't think there's two cards in his deck short of two Boros Charms that will answer this situation. So, three pack rats, a Muta Vault on board. He's going to go ahead and load that up. Move to his attack step. And looks like there's the handshake, and that's the end of the game. So, unfortunate uh, series of circumstances for Ryan there. He's on the play already, so he's basically down a card. He mulled to six, and then the first two spells that Kazu cast were both targeted discard. He ended up casting a Thought Season 3 Duress before the game was over, and Ryan just couldn't mass enough burn to get Kazu down to a threatening life total. So Kazu and his Mono Black Devotion deck move on to 2-0. And then Ryan still in the hunt for the top eight, as we do have eight rounds at one and one. X2 should be fine to make the top eight of this event, I would think. So both of these guys still live and in charge. Live and in charge. That's not even a real thing anyone says, is it, George? <laughs> How'd you do?